Hey guys, Chris here with Graham Cochran from the Recording Revolution. So if you just came back from a 10 year trip to Mars, you don't know who Graham Cochran is. You know, he runs the Recording Revolution, amazing YouTube channel. So I'm gonna leave the link in the description down below. And today we're gonna talk about five ways to be more creative in the studio. Hope you guys are doing good. Uh, if you're new here on the channel, feel free to subscribe to the channel to click the notification bell so you don't miss anything. And again, you know the drill, share and like if you find that the video is helpful. Graham, thank you for being here. Dude, pumped to be here. We're here in California at NAM, which is always great because, you know, I get to, uh, to meet with uh, this wonderful human being. <laughs> That's the best part. The best part is connecting with people like Chris and seeing everyone we see on the internet, you know, <laughs> through the cameras, we get exactly, to see them yeah. in person. So yeah, I love it. It's always fun. And um, now we're lucky enough to have Graham sharing with us some very cool tips about uh, being more creative in the studio. So let's go with tip number one, Graham. Yeah, so the first thing that's helped me out is something that I learned from a guy named Jay Abraham, who's a business consultant guru, sales guy. He calls the creativity switch. And the idea was simple, is like if you wanna be more creative, he was thinking about it for his business, but if you wanna be more creative with your music, you can't do the same thing you always do because your brain is conditioned and designed to become efficient. So mm. it, if it figures out that you always wake up and do the same thing first thing in the morning, or if you're in the studio, you always use this mic in this way, or you always do everything the same, it can basically go to sleep because it's really good at running an autopilot. It does so much. So his idea was change up your routine, get different stimuli, whether it's visual or auditory, to make your brain notice that something's different. Yeah. So then it wakes up a bit and it goes from autopilot mode to like fully functioning mode, which is, that's I think to be creative, you want your brain to be fully awake. Exactly. Because there's yeah. so much power in there, but it's, it's, just, it's an interesting concept of what can you switch up to in your routine to be more creative. So you have examples? So, for the studio, for me, so when I heard this concept, I said, oh, this is great. And since I'm a weirdo, I like to do like themed challenges. Yeah. And so I'm gonna do, in my mind, I was like, I'm gonna do a whole EP, a whole little record based off the creativity switch. And I wanna switch up everything and see what happens. So one of the first things I wanted to do to switch it up was to make a record in an entirely different piece of software. Okay. So that's one thing you can do to unlock your creativity. So I'm a Pro Tools guy. I record in Pro Tools, mix in Pro Tools. So I said, okay, let me pick a, not only a different DAW, but I wanted to pick the most the most <laughs> bizarre DAW. Which was? Which was Reason. Oh, okay. And if you're a Reason user, I love you. I, I need to ask you how to use <laughs> Reason properly because I don't understand how Reason works. But um, I decided to use something. So visually, I'd be looking at something different visually. And obviously, there's different plugins, different mm. sounds. Yeah. But... Um, it was, I couldn't do the same thing I always do in Pro Tools because I, I, it was, my hands were tied a little bit because I didn't know the program very well, but that was one way to just get my brain thinking differently. That's pretty cool. That's pretty interesting. I guess for me it would be something like Ableton. Yeah, yeah. That would like, example. yeah, that would turn my, my, my world apart, <laughs> basically. Well, yeah, because different DAWs, some have, some are more similar than others, but like Ableton is very loop-based. Yeah, exactly. Reason is very much like you have the rack where it's like yeah. you're, you're plugging in like virtual. The cable thing yeah, is quite cable. cool though, you know? I remember when I first uh, worked with, uh, with Reason, that was years ago, but uh, that was interesting. So it turned out well in the end? I mean, I, I think so. I think so, but like, so what that, that was one of the things that when I started making a record with that program, I had different, plugins and different mm. sounds yeah. and so they have cool vocal distortion plugins and I did different things on that record because I could because those different sounds were there and they were readily available and I was just I was more experimental I was like oh, I don't know what this is so let me try exactly, it yeah and that's a for me that was a good place to be because I I've been making music for so long that I kind of just do things the same way yeah. so that's one tip is just use a different piece of software that's amazing and let's go with tip number two so tip number two is if you're a songwriter and you're also making your own music, you probably have an instrument that you tend to write off of. So I'm a guitar player and a singer, so I tend to like start with the guitar and I sit down and it's, my songs come out of that. Consequently, they, they, they're gonna have a certain sound because they're based off of 
guitar chords. Yeah. I'm not a keyboard player, I can't play keyboards. So this time around, I decided to start with drum loops. So okay. start writing from a different instrument. So if, you, if you're fortunate enough to be able to play different instruments, then you could just start with keyboard or you could start yeah. with, I can't. So I was like, I will just, in reason, cycle through a bunch of drum loops and just see what it's, and literally write songs based off of that loop. Don't nice. even touch my guitar. I brought guitars in later, but that was to support whatever the song was coming out of the drum. Okay. So, so I guess you, you, you start with the loop, you brought up, like you, you, you created a melody or something because you don't have any chord progressions or? It's or different something. for each one. So one song had a loop and then I, once I found a loop I really liked, I started to hear like a bass line in my head. Okay. And I was like, oh, so I grabbed my bass. I was like, what if I play this on the loop? And then, That's okay, perfect. then I'll support that with guitar. That's Other perfect. ones, I started with drum loops, and then I would cycle through like organ loops or keyboard I loops see. or piano loops. And I, I'm not a loop-based musician, but again, this was something different, so it made me more creative. Because I'm still a singer and a songwriter, and I'm still gonna play guitar, but what came out of this, the songs turned out differently because of the origin of the, the yeah, first definitely. instrument, you know? Yeah. So start with a different instrument. I love it. If you don't play another instrument, that leads me to another tip, which is collaborate with someone else. Collaboration is, I've talked about that, you know, on this channel a lot. I love collaboration. This is part of, uh, that was actually part of my process, um, you know, producing music. That's for clients or for myself, you know, always collaborating with people. You know, awesome. I just love it. But so many, so many home studio musicians these days don't collaborate. No. Um, Cause they don't have to, to, to realize their musical visions, which I love. You're empowered to just make it all yourself. And I love to do it all myself, but um, if you want to be more creative, sometimes collaborating with someone who either A, plays a different instrument than you, then you can literally write songs with a different instrument. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or, like I'm doing right now, I'm finishing up an EP with our mutual friend Ill Factor. Yeah. Uh, and he's a super talented electronic music producer in Miami. And he just does, he does different music genre-wise than I do, but also different instruments. And so we co-wrote a whole five song EP together we did a couple singles together and it worked out really well, so we wanted to do more, cool. but I just went to his studio and we, we just locked the door for 48 hours. We just said, let's see what comes out. And he would start with a bunch of weird sounds that I don't have access to or I can't play keyboard, so I would never hear. And then I would bring my sort of rock and guitar sensibilities to what he was doing. And it's just cool, different stuff came out. That's so cool. Man, okay, what about tip number four? So we did different software, different instrument, Collaboration. collaboration. So, go to a different environment. And so this does, this can be as, as crazy as literally going to a different studio or okay. recording outside or doing something weird. I have a, one of my students who recorded in a, in a car. Like he just, he needed to record vocals. He literally got this song on a, uh, a national TV commercial. It's for like Chevron, a gas station Seriously. or something. But uh, he needed to do the vocals in a quiet spot so he didn't record it in his car. Awesome. Anyway, so you can record in your car. Um, what I did was instead of recording at my studio, home studio desk with all my gear, I grabbed a little portable interface and just went to my sofa, sat down on my couch, on the coffee table, and it's, it's in my house. It's not really a different place, but it feels different. You're sitting on a couch. I'm not in front of my, I got a little laptop, a little interface. It just feels different. And that's kind of going back to the creativity switch. That's the idea that it can be one little yeah. shift it sounds weird, but your brain is seeing different visual stimuli. You're, you're sitting in a different spot. Makes you're not, you're, it just forces your brain to wake up. Because when you sit at your desk that you always sit at with your mouse and your keyboard or whatever your rig is, you, your brain knows it. It's comfortable, so it can go yeah, to sleep. Exactly. And our whole goal is to wake up the brain. Man, those are cool tips. Yeah, man. There's one last one. This one is a little counterintuitive, and I, and I don't know if this is even the one we were talking about, but is, if you're a typical creative and you just sit down and create in studio and whatever comes out comes out whenever it comes out, one way to be more creative is to set really strict deadlines. Mm, yeah. And I, and I say that because a lot of creatives struggle with deadlines um, and they feel like deadlines are suffocating or yeah. limiting or, you know, how can you put a deadline on art, but I, I don't think a lot of home studio musicians realize that the best songwriters, the best creatives in the world, this is their job and they have deadlines and they work with, they, they go to work every day and sit down like I've got eight hours, I need to write two songs or I need to write three songs or one really good song and they have to get it done and it's that bit of pressure that helps you focus. That's, that's all deadlines are good for is focus. 
And again, it's, it's getting your brain to do what it can do really well, but your brain is so, your brain is like me. It wants to be as efficient exactly. and as sleepy as possible. Well, I just <laughs> wanna do the maximum output with a minimum effort, you know? And that's, it's a powerful thing, but to be creative, we wanna wake our brain up. So I think when you have a deadline, like, hey, I wanna record a single, and not only write it, record it, but I wanna release it in the next 30 days. Yeah. And, you, and you, you circle on your calendar, and you tell your fans on, on Instagram or Facebook, new single drops on this date. Once you've done that, it's out in the open, you kind of are forced to make it happen. And you'll be surprised how good you can do something if you have to. It's hard, like for myself, set up a deadline for my own music yeah. is something super hard. For a client, when you don't have a choice, that goes well. And I work well under pressure. That's good. You know? But it's um, hard for your own music? For my own music or you know, to, to set up my own deadlines, it's like, okay, it's a bit harder than doing it for a client. What do you find is the hardest part about it? Do you find like you just don't hit the deadline or do you, does it stress you out? Or? Um, maybe I don't hit the deadline. Maybe that's one of, maybe I'm, yeah, maybe I'm afraid of not meeting the deadline. Maybe maybe it's a money issue, a financial issue. You know, when okay. you work with a client, you have like a deadline, you have like money that comes with it for okay. sure. Okay. And also now you, you, you force yourself, you have the time, you, you make the time, you know, because yeah. you have the financial aspect that is covered that you don't have yeah. to worry about. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that, and you want to please your client. You yeah. want to make sure the client's happy. You want to make sure the client's going to come back after. Yeah. He's going to take, he's, he's going to talk highly of you, you know? So you want to make sure he's going to come out of the studio happy. And by meeting a deadline, you know, you know, the client's going to come, you know, usually the, the client's so ironic happy. though, because you should, you should think those things about yourself, there right? You that I, you come out of the, the process happy, that yeah. you get what you like. You should treat yourself like a client. And I think that's one of the, like, I love the home studio. One of the reasons why, like I used to intern at a $5 million studio in Virginia and I thought what I wanted was to get one of the paid, in, uh, paid engineer positions and work my way up and work in that environment. And I realized after six months of working there, like this isn't fun. I actually have more fun at home in my apartment mm, yeah. making music because I'm more creative. So I get, I love the freedom of being at home studio, but you have to treat yourself like a professional book your own studio time with yourself on the calendar so you don't, you know, because life is going to get in the way. I have a wife, I have kids, I, I want to spend time with my friends and family and volunteer at my church. Like, I have life. But if you don't put yourself on your calendar, yeah, that's, it's just so, all the things you said about your clients, you should do that for yourself. <laughs> you know, I'm taking something out of this, you know, so I'm going to treat myself as a client. So that's one of my... And you can pay yourself. My go There you go. You can rate your rates and pay yourself <laughs> you over there. That's awesome. <laughs> Money goes right back. <laughs> Hey, thank you, Graham. I really appreciate it. Thanks for having me, man. Guys, again, uh, go check his channel if you didn't already. I'm gonna leave all the links below and like, share if you think that was helpful. And again, if you're new here on the channel, subscribe and click the notification bell. Until next time, take care and see you.